for the last inning of the year to finally get concealed carry. You know, I can't take the position that someone who looks like me or someone, even someone white who lives in Cook County, I can't take that position that you should not register because then I'm asking you to place your life on the line. I'm asking you to trust the government uh, to protect you. And as a former cop who's responded, we often get there late. So I, I can't take that position. That's so. uh, Instructor Mike, Mike Brown out of uh, Cook County, a uh, veteran of the armed services, a retired police officer. Uh, he goes by Instructor Mike on YouTube, and uh, he also uh, runs security training concepts. And uh, I, I subscribed to him not long ago um, after seeing some of uh, his, his videos pop up, and he had a conversation, a live stream with his audience, really going into um, detail about what they should or should shouldn't do uh, when it comes to the firearm registry and well, not that's necessarily the, giving detailed uh, you know uh, the, uh, recommendations but rather uh, in a way just laying out there what the reality is especially in a county like Cook so I chatted with him yesterday everything about you know the the, the issue of uh, whether or not in the database when police pull you over is it going to show that you know John Smith has or has not registered their firearm uh, what about uh, you know the rhetoric that gun control advocates have uh, do they show a level of ignorance of sorts uh, but we also uh, talk about uh, where we're at now in this whole situation uh, especially how the black community in Chicago uh, is going to be impacted by the law but also how they're going to be impacted by the enforcement of the law. So uh, where are we at right now? Uh, seems to be just the go-to question I had for uh, Instructor Mike in our conversation yesterday. Well, that's the thing. Uh, you know, I totally understand that the uh, there are people who are choosing not to comply and uh, for understandable reasons. However, of the 102 counties in the state of Illinois, uh, the majority of whom are not in support of this bill. Uh, I just happen to teach and happen to live in the county, uh, Cook County, the biggest county, if you will, uh, that is in support of this bill. And so, you know, I see a call across the state. People are saying they're not going to comply. And they have the sheriffs and the state's attorneys who are supporting that. And that's great. That's what the uh, state police did say in the hearings, that it's going to be subject to the uh, jurisdiction of the state's attorneys to enforce the provisions of that bill. But in Cook County, they are most definitely going to enforce the provisions of that bill for those who do not comply. And so in good conscience, I can't suggest that people in Cook County, in Chicago, don't register because you stand the chance of losing your freedom and your license. Because, of course, uh, you know, you've got a Class A misdemeanor for the first offense and a Class 3 felony for second and subsequent offenses. Uh, so in the conversation I had yesterday with uh, Instructor Mike, uh, a firearms instructor in Chicago and Cook County, uh, what, what are the implications of this law on the black community in Chicago? Uh, of course, I mean, you've got uh, crime that's happening. Uh, he talks about the need for uh, having tools to defend one's self. Uh, so what are going to be the implications of this law banning certain types of firearms in Chicago? Well, it, unlike the other maybe 101 or 100 counties where the crime rates are not, uh, let's just say the fear of crime is more than the actual occurrence of crime itself. Uh, and that would give or take, depending upon where you are, I hear Peoria and Decatur, uh, and Quincy has some issues close to being St. Louis and stuff like that. But, you know, none, they all pale in comparison to Chicago. And we are in a literal war zone, um, even though crime happens in pockets. And so unlike in other counties where they carry it in support of the Second Amendment, in the event something happens, we live in the area where things happen. You know, I am not, I'm just down the street from a popular um, a, a place where violence uh, suddenly happens all the time. It's a place called O-Block, you know? So in Chicago, we need these weapons, you know, and especially in the in the wake of the George Floyd riots and, and the COVID-19 things that were happening and, you know, the, the, the pandemic and the fears of crime and possessions being taken, gun sales shot through the roof. People were not only just buying semi-automatic firearms, but they were buying these so-called assault uh, weapons and assault rifles. Uh, and this is going to have uh, disastrous results on the black community because the Chicago police, and for good purposes or good intentions, I see, they're not responding 
as fast as they could, as fast as they used to. They're not responding to uh, people calling for service and people calling for help. And so we have to defend ourselves. Uh, and so that, that that's a unfortunate position to be in. The government is not helping. So again, uh, talking with instructor Mike, uh, he is a firearms instructor in Cook County, uh, and you can find him on YouTube as well, instructor Mike. But um, you know, the question about how the law is going to impact uh, citizens in Cook County who want to protect themselves, uh, but what about enforcement of that? Is there going to be disproportionate impact on the black citizens in Cook County? Uh, and uh, instructor Mike lays it out. He, uh, he essentially, you know, spells out exactly what. Uh, uh, what could possibly be happening with uh, enforcement of this law? Well, definitely for the law-abiding citizens, you know, and so it, it would also depend on uh, the interaction with law enforcement. I do as much as I can keep a pulse check on what comes in and out of the latent criminal courthouse uh, for bond court, central bond court. And I could see there being a, a heavy enforcement of the ban and of the registration because the message has to be sent to kind of give uh, other people or other counties an incentive to comply. And so I think that Cook County is gonna be ground zero for a test case as to the enforcement uh, because of the low numbers of registration. And this is not to encourage people, please go on ahead and register if you're outside of Cook County or if you're living in a county where enforcement is not gonna be as much. But in Cook County, it's definitely gonna, you're gonna start to see some uh, arrest and some license revocations. And I think you've reported on uh, the clear and present danger situation that happened in the wake of Robert Cremo and how the state police revamped their clear and present danger uh, uh, system and uh, blanketly, just retroactively went back to uh, anybody who ever had an, a report of those things and suspended and revoked FOIA cards and, and concealed carry licenses to try to right the ship, if you will. Uh, so if they could do that, I could see there being a heavy degree of enforcement and we as black folks i'm just going to just lay it out on the table we're going to be the first test subjects well especially if you consider it being in cook county um before we uh get some more of the conversation with instructor mike he talked about low registration rates and i do want to pull up this is from yesterday uh the foid statistics the firearm owner id card statistics 2.41 million all right 2.41 million void card holders uh but if you look at uh, the most recent um uh, firearms registration numbers from illinois state police yesterday morning when we were on the program it was at 6100 people saying that they owned a banned firearm and i'm refreshing it now because you can see uh that it has now gone up to 8143 uh, and about uh, 24,300 total disclosures that includes the firearms disclosures accessory disclosures and the uh ammunition disclosures so total number of firearms uh 15,877 what does that come out to not even uh two firearms per individual making a disclosure uh, and all of that number comes down to uh, about 35 percent of void sorry let me step back 0.35 percent of total void card holders in the state of illinois so that is around one third of one percentile all right, so 0.35% of total FOID card holders saying that they have a banned firearm, uh, telling Illinois State Police that they have a banned firearm. Uh, who's registering? Could it be those in Cook County facing the, the implications of uh, heavy enforcement of the law in Cook County uh, by the Illinois State Police or by you know prosecutors in Cook County? Uh, could that be where we're seeing uh, a lot of those who see it as prudent to register uh, because they know it's it's going to be enforced and, and what instructor Mike is essentially saying is in the rest of the state where you know 90 plus sheriffs have said they're not going to enforce this 90 plus uh, uh, state's attorneys say they're not going to make it a top priority or however that breaks down uh, in, in, in those counties people may feel safe saying they won't comply you know you see the comments on social media all up and down but for the reality in Cook County as instructor Mike is saying 
that's not the case. They're going to have enforcement of this. He sees the black community in particular, and even the white community in Cook County, uh, being test subjects of the law post January 1st. Because keep in mind, we also have not had any action from any of the courts checking the latest uh, docket entry for uh, the federal firearms licensees of Illinois and their case to try to delay that January 1st deadline. There has been no update to the docket since Friday when the plaintiffs uh, filed their opposition to a motion to dismiss the claim to delay that January 1st deadline. So again, uh, the courts haven't acted. You got less than two weeks and looking at the statistics from Illinois State Police of the 2.4 million firearm owner ID card holders, 0.35% have registered. Who is that that's registering? Maybe it's gonna be the people uh, in Cook County uh, thinking that, they, that this is gonna be enforced there where the rest of the state, it doesn't seem to be uh, a top priority for enforcement. So back to instructor Mike, uh, talking about how police are going to interact with such information. If you recall, and again, those have been watching for some time now, uh, you've been you've been seeing us review the uh, Joint Committee on Administrative Rules, uh, and uh, you've got uh, the ongoing uh, questions of how police are going to interact with this stuff. Uh, so, you know, leads is one of those databases where it's going to be populated, according to Illinois State Police, that uh, the the uh, registration status of an individual is going to be posted. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Uh, Instructor Mike, a former police officer, breaks that down. Yes and no. Um, uh, having been a police officer and having operated this data system, uh, I don't think it's going to report whether or not someone has uh, failed to report it unless uh, the ATF happens to share the information, if they even have that information. Uh, when you go to purchase a firearm or you purchase a rifle before you filled out the ATF form 4473 and the ATF just happens to share that data with the Illinois State Police, they will then know who has or has not registered or who has these uh, so-called assault weapons, and then they would have to enter all that data into leads where upon the running of a driver's license or the running of an Illinois registration plate, the name check or the plate check, if your license is attached to the plate, they would then get notice that you purchased this and you failed to register. That would be the only way that I could see uh, something like that happening. Now, could they conduct a traffic stop? Absolutely. You've got Pennsylvania versus MIMS, which gives them United States Supreme Court case, which gives them access to the car, alleging that there's an officer safety issue for the driver and for the officer. And then you have Maryland versus Wilson, which gives that same permission extended to the passengers. So there's legal ways that they can get inside of the car. And if they should so happen to find a so-called assault weapon or assault rifle in your vehicle, then if they do a check through leads to see if a registration has been entered, then that would trigger the any type of penalties or any type of arrest for the failing to register. So that, that's where I could see the issue. And traffic stops happen all the time. I mean, people follow me on social media. I get pulled over all the time uh, uh, for things, you know, driver's license plates and stuff like that. Of course, you know, I don't have any issues with the police, but um, that happens. And so, yeah. Now, the question also uh, I posed to Instructor Mike, who, by the way, I saw pop up in the live chat. Uh, good to see him there. Uh, but we chatted yesterday uh, in the uh, afternoon hours just about where we're at in this process with less than two weeks. Uh, but I also wanted to get his reaction about, uh, you know, some of the gun control advocates and how they talk about these things. Last week, Governor J.B. Pritzker said he believes that uh, it's widely understood what people need to register. And then he started talking about automatic assault weapons and high speed, high capacity, rather, magazines, he says. So uh, when, when you know, a gun instructor hears those types of things, what does he think? Uh, here's Instructor Mike on that. Well, Governor Prisker doesn't strike me as someone who knows a lot about firearms, but it is a issue that he can use for the democratic platform you know it's, it's just politics uh i'm not conservative or liberal republican or democrat i'm independent and so i could see them using that as a platform as they always do um against firearms and things like that the problem is is uh he has he has a bunch of state police who are around him to protect him as does mayor, mayor johnson and, and all of the elected officials who have 
that type of uh, budget to be able to have that. Um, but he, he is not necessarily concerned with uh, the crime that we have to deal with and have to try to defend ourselves. I mean, town of Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, the police are not required to protect you. And so that's why, you know, you have the high spike in people purchasing firearms and people having rifles, you know, the riots and things like that. Uh, yeah, so I, I could see him taking those positions. And I, he doesn't strike me as somebody who really knows, you know, nor, did, nor, nor do I even think he cares. And he has the money and the status to not even have to care. He doesn't live where we live, so. Another question that I had uh, for instructor Mike yesterday is what he's hearing from those he has connections with, those who he communicates with on a regular basis, his listeners, his subscribers at his YouTube channel. What is he hearing from uh, those individuals uh, on a day to day basis? They just want to know if they have to register, what they have to register, how can they transport the firearms? Are they going to get in trouble? if they don't register, but I haven't heard too many people say they're not going to register. Um, that would be like them telling on themselves. They're not really fans of doing that. Uh, so it's mainly what can I buy? What can I buy? And so now you can't even purchase a, a, a so-called assault uh, rifle or weapon or anything like that. So that's out of the question. Mainly it's just pistol questions. You know, they've always had a fear of the police. They've always had a fear of being uh, unjustly pulled over uh, for no particular reason or just for enforcement action. So I, I haven't heard of a spike in those things because that fear has always been present and they've just had to just deal with it. And it's been unfortunate. And like I said, I can see Cook County and especially in South side and West side neighborhoods, I can see those being uh first test case for enforcement. And uh, instructor Mike also, I asked about just some last thoughts that he has uh, and where we're at in all of this. No, I mean, I just I just understand that my my opinion is not a popular opinion. We would like to, in the Second Amendment community, be one team, one fight. But, you know, just like with any war, any battle or anything like that, I'm a veteran of the military, the, Ar the Army. You have to consider the theater where you're going to operate these little mini war, these mini battles and things like that. And in Chicago, I, you know, can't take the whole position that everyone should not comply because we actually need the tools that we, the last state in the union, we're the last state in the union to finally get concealed carry. You know, I can't take the position that someone who looks like me or someone, even someone white who lives in Cook County, I can't take that position that you should not register because then I'm asking you to place your life on the line. I'm asking you to trust the government uh, to protect you. And as a former cop who's responded, we often get there late. So I, I can't take that position. Again, thanks to Instructor Mike for uh, taking some time with me yesterday to, to chat about these issues. Uh, I will definitely be connecting with him again in the near future uh, as uh, we watch this thing get implemented January 1st. Because again, uh, as of right now, no action from the U.S. Supreme Court. You had Judge Stephen McGlynn in the Southern District deny summary partial judgment against the law in the Langley case with the Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois case in the Southern District still pending. I'll be tracking that to see if we get something happen uh, today. So uh, be watching me on X. Just uh, follow along Bishop on air uh, so you can uh, get the latest there. All right. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, of course, we've got plenty more here with Bishop on air.